Hi, once again, it's good to have you once again. Thank you for joining us today. Uh, we are committed to give you spiritual nourishment. We can be able to take you through these hard times. And I'm believing God that he has continued to keep you and to protect you in every and everywhere you go. And today, I just want to speak to us about something probably that uh, has surrounded many of us. And I want to speak to us about how to live a worry-free life. And I want us to talk about from a person who went through the situation and he did not went through the situation worrying, but he went through a situation which could have caused worry, but because he knew how to overcome the worry, he went through the situation in a very, very victorious way. And so we can learn from his principles and because the principles of the kingdom never change. The Bible talks about in Ephesians chapter 2, chapter 4 and verse 2 and verse 4. This is what the Bible says. And now I want to preach with those two dear women, your dear and Siteke, please, please, with the Lord help, quarrel no more. Be friends again, and I ask you, my true teammate, to help these women, for they worked side by side with me in telling the good news to others. Now they worked with Clement too, and the rest of my fellow workers whose names are written in the Lamb Book of Life. In the, in, if there was a person who had a good reason to worry, it was Paul. And Paul, when he was writing this letter he, to the people in, in Philippians, remember he was in prison. He was about to be, to, be, to be murdered. And Paul was writing not because he was fearful. He was, instead of praying about fear, he was talking about how to overcome fear. And the church in Philippians was about, you know, there were two div there were divisions. The division has affected the whole church. And he was speaking about, there was a great concern. And not only this battle, but he was also fighting another battle because another the church in Rome, they were also divided. So if at all uh, things of interest like this uh, are surrounding you, there's a church in Philip, there's a church in Roma, he is himself is in prison. These are the reasons why it can cause most of us to worry. And probably you're in a situation right now, you could be surrounded by these things. Beside all that is what is happening across the group in this nation, beside what we are hearing and, uh, and seeing each and every other time. But Paul, he, he had a so many other different enemies, but he was speaking from a point of confidence that we can be able to, to face to face worry and to subdue it because of the principles he learned. And I want to let you know that uh, when he was talking about this, he was talking to us and he was telling us it, it takes more than good intention not to worry. Just telling you that you don't worry is you not be able to catch the thief. What you're going to do is that you are going to dive into the message, what what Paul ran in Philippians chapter 4 so that we can start employing it in our life. So what we are going through right now, we don't become the victim, we become the victors. And this was the Bible says in, in Philippians chapter 4 and verse 6, do not be anxious about anything. But in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. What is worry? Now, the Bible says in Philip chapter 4 and verse 6, that the Bible says, do not be anxious. Now, the word anxious, it means to pull apart. And when you mean a pulling apart, is when hope is going on one side and fear is going one side, they pull you apart. And this is what most of us will find. Because when you find when there are situations that are beyond our strength, Strength. People who probably are causing, causing, you know, causing pain into our lives and we can't do anything about it. We find ourselves worrying. But Paul told us that you don't need to worry. What you really need to know is to learn some, 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 some truth you can hold on that can be able to take you through in the time, in the time of uh, the time that are challenging. That word worry in the English, English, English dictionary, it means actually to entangle, to entangle and, and, and when you're entangled, you, it is as if you're in a battle. I was living somewhere and I found that when people worry, sometimes they have headaches, sometimes they have backache, sometimes they have uh, sometimes they have uh, they, they, they have uh, arches. You know, they, they, there's a lot that can be able to affect. It affects your mind, it affects your coordination, it affects your digestion. The, no wonder God tells us not to worry. And I want to help you today because probably you're in a situation right now that you are worried about. The issue is 
is not to not to pray about it and i pray that even if you pray about it there are some things that you need to learn what paul learned so that we find ourselves winning this battle so what did paul learn and this is some of the things that you find is that uh, paul and the, one of the things that you find that paul says is that uh, you know you know the in 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 uh, in 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 second chronicle chapter 20 and verse 1 3 and this is some of the things that we worry because when you talk about worry the bible says that uh, worry the bible says worry is wrong thinking this is my own definition that worry is wrong thinking and the wrong feeling about certain things and most of those things that we keep on worrying about there are three of them we worry about uh, about we worry about circumstances we worry about people and we worry about things these are the major cause of worry circumstances people and things but sometimes we are scared about this about the shadows sometimes we are scared you know when when we are going through situations that we cannot understand but I'm, on the other hand i want to show you some people who face such a situation that could have caused a lot of worry and some of them when they responded positively according to the word of god they came and they emerged they came victoriously and they emerged as winners and one of them is uh, is jehoshaphat the bible says in 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 uh, the, the bible Bible says in in uh, in second chronicle chapter 20 and 1 to 3 and most of us we know this scripture this is what the bible says it happened after this that the people of moab with the people of amnon and others with, with them beside the ammonites came to battle against jehoshaphat then some came and told jehoshaphat saying a great multitude is coming against you from beyond the sea from syria and they are in hazard tama and uh, and Jehoshaphat feared and set himself to seek the Lord and proclaim a fast throughout all Judah. The situation was beyond what he could be able to bear. He was he was surrounded by three armies, and the Bible says when he learned about it, they were so close. This as a comes and probably you are in a situation like this. When Jehoshaphat looked into himself, he looked at the resources which he had, he looked what was happening, he is no, he came to know I cannot be able to do anything about it. Thank God that God is always on our side. And what did he do? He did not allow the situation to afflict him, but he lifted up his eyes unto God. So circumstances, even though they look fearful, circumstances even look they look threatening, they don't have to determine the end. If you know how to trust in God, circumstances can be subdued and one you don't have to fear circumstances because if God is on your side, just like how Jehoshaphat lifted his eyes and told God, we don't have any strength to fight this battle, but our eyes are on you. Remember what the Bible says that God will never leave you and will never forsake you. There is no problem that can come that God does not see it. I love what the Bible says when Peter, when Andrew went to, when Andrew went to Jesus when they were feeding 5,000, the Bible says, and Jesus knew what you would do. And even in your situation right now, Jesus know what you need to do. Don't allow fear, don't allow worry to intimidate you. God of Jehoshaphat is our God and he will help you. The other thing also that you also find that also cause a lot of us to worry is people. And this is what the Bible says in 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 Josh in 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 Joshua chapter six and verse one. Now 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 sorry sorry I beg your pardon. In Second Samuel chapter fifteen and verse two. Now Ahithophel was one of the David's advisors. He was from the town of G of Gira, where where Absalom was offering sacrifice. He invited Ahithophel to join. Absalom Absalom plans were working very well, and more and more people began to support him. Now, this was Ahithophel, was one of the most trusted counselors of David. And the Bible says that this time that David was in the wilderness, he had been overthrown by his son Absalom. And when he heard that Ahithophel was in the sight of Absalom, this is what the Bible says. David cried and said, Oh God, may you turn the counsel of Ahithophel into foolishness. Because Ahithophel, the Bible talks about, where Ahithophel, when he spoke to you as if a God had said, 
did. So he had not only the advantage of the counsel and wisdom. The Bible says when he came on the side of Absalom, his, the Absalom company continued to increase greatly. And some of these people, sometimes you find they are people who probably are mightier, probably have a lot of strength, probably they have a great ability compared to you. And when actually they are against you and on the, on the opposite side, they can cause a lot of fear. But you don't have to fear because the Bible says that when God, when David cried unto God and actually as David cried and said, let the counsel of Ahithopel be turned to, uh, to foolishness, that exactly what God can do. You see one of the things that you know, that you need to know, my brother, my sister, that when God is on your side, there is no battle that you cannot win. I love what David said when he was going after God. He said, I come to you in the name of the Lord. He did not have a stand to fight that battle and win with by himself, but because of who he was. Blessed is somebody who have a stone, but who has a God of Israel on his side. And because David knew how to fight battle, he had fought battle, he had trusted God, he would not allow people to intimidate him. And even right now, whoever seems to be taking advantage of you, whoever seems to be having an upper heart, when God is on your side, he will turn the foolishness of Ahithopel, the counsel of Ahithopel to foolishness. He will be able to fight for you and bring down your God yet because God, when was on your side, he is going to fight your battles for you. The other thing also find that also threaten us is things and most of the time sometimes is depths sometimes is what is happening around us but even things they don't need to cause us to worry this was the bible says in if in, in, in Joshua chapter 6 and verse 1. Now Jericho was fenced, or, 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 now Jericho, a fenced town with high walls, was tightly closed because of the Israelites. No one went out or came in. The Bible says that Jericho, and Jericho was a very, very important town or a city to be captured by the Israelites. Imagine, because this was the first battle they fought when they got to the promised land. If they did not capture Jericho, the, the, the news could have spread all over that uh, Israelite, uh, you know, a uh, coward Israelite cannot be able to fight. If they could have been overcome by people in Jericho, it could have been very, you know, could be, have been very bad for the Israelite. But when Joshua was looking up and he saw those eye walls, there is no way he could have brought them down. They remember, they, don't have, they didn't have the machine we have today. They didn't have, but he looked unto God. And let me say this, because the Bible says that the, that the Jericho was shut because of the children of Israel. There are some places you like to go. There are some things you would love to do and you find you have no means whatsoever. Thank God that God said, when you go through the waters, I am with you. When you go through the rivers, the river will not run, uh, run over you. God of Joshua is your God. And without, without a hammer, without knocking the doors, and without pulling down the walls, the walls you came down. So things don't need to threaten you. You can be in the same place together with the rest of the people because the war we are talking about probably are wars in mind. Probably it's a war that you cannot be able to see. But everything that God has planned for you will come to pass. Nothing will stop you. Nothing will kill you. Nothing will bring you down in the name of Jesus because God of Joshua is your God. So you don't need to fear things. You don't need to fear people. And you don't need to fear circumstances. But David said, but, but Paul said, Paul said, for you to be able to live that kind of life, that kind of life free of worry, there are some few things that you need to do. And this is what the Bible says in in uh, in, in uh, what, what, the, 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 there is something that the Bible talks about in Philippians chapter 4 and verse 7. And the peace of God which surpasses all understanding will guard your heart and mind through Christ Jesus. And you find that the reason why or why Paul was not fearful because he had had a secured mind because the peace come from a secured mind. Our mind is so, so important. And when Paul was talking about how to, how to live a thrive or free of fear, he spoke of worry, sorry. He spoke about three things. He spoke about, uh, about, uh, about, uh, he spoke about heart, he spoke about mind, and he spoke about right living. And those are the things that I want to talk to you today because it's not enough to tell you not to worry. It's not enough to tell you, you no, 
not to tell you, it's not enough to tell you have good intention. No, you have to know what Paul did and what Paul had so that you can enjoy the same thing. And this today, I want to let you know that one of the greatest things that you can ever have is to have, as Paul said in, in, uh, in Philippians chapter 4, verse 6 and verse 7. What did Paul say it, we, we need to do if you are going to overcome worry? He said in, uh, in, in he said that uh, be anxious for nothing, but in everything in prayer and supplication, let your request be known to God. And the peace of God that which surpasses all understanding will guard your heart and mind through Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And Paul said, he did not say that you go and pray about it. Paul was smarter than that. He said pray. And he spoke about three words, especially in Philippians 6 and verse 7, which I need us to, you know, to amplify, to, to speak about in details a little bit. And he spoke about prayer. He spoke about supplication. And he spoke about thanksgiving. And I want to say this because if we are going to overcome worry, this is what Paul did. And if we do the same thing, we're going to go the same result. So he did not say, don't worry. No, 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 no. Paul was smarter than that. He did not say, you know, pray about it. No, he did not do that. He told you what to do. And he said, pray, you, you know, and he said that, uh, you know, you pray, they pray, the Bible talk about supplication and thanksgiving. So the first thing that you want us to talk about is what is the right prayer and right, you know, the right kind of prayer and the right type kind of prayer. The Bible talks about those three things, the prayer, supplication, and thanksgiving. And I want to say this because you see it in Joshua chapter 5, verse 13 to verse 14. The Bible says, Now when Joshua was in Jericho, he looked and he saw a man standing in front of him with a drawn sword in his hand. Joshua went up to him and asked, Are you for us or our enemies? Neither, he replied, but a commander of the army of the Lord I have come. Then Joshua fell down to the ground in reference and asked him, what message does my Lord have for his servant? So prayer generally is giving our needs to God, but it have three things which are very, very important. Our adoration, our devotion, and our worship. And that's what you find. Just you are the commander of the army of God. That is adoration. He, the Bible says Joshua fell down on the face on the ground in reference. That is worship. And then he say, and then he say that, uh, you know, what, what message does my Lord have for his servant? Now that is devotion. And I want to say this because prayer, most of the time we pray, we hurriedly go to pray. But prayer, you need to be calm and you need to know that when you approach the kingdom of God, we approach the king, we approach God in prayer by reference and adoration. And it's not how fast you go, it is the protocol of heaven that you need to observe. And they need adoration, it need um, devotion, and they need worship. If you have that kind of prayer, your heaven prayer will be heard. When the Joshua was praying, the first thing that Joshua did was to contact. Probably nobody else knew because when he meant, meant the angel of the Lord, nobody else is mentioned. He, him, him, and himself alone. And I pray in the name of Jesus, when you are hit and when you are worried, the first part of contact should be God. Actually, you can know whom you trust and what your fear, your faith is. That is your first point of contact. Some of you, you don't remember even to pray. Some of you, you run to finances. Some of you, you run to your husband. Some of you, you run to your wives. And much as you like to, to, you know, to trust them, there are some praise and there are some things they cannot be able to bear. But I pray that like Joshua, you do go to approach God and you go to pray. But when you pray, no, it is the right kind of prayer where you pray, where you adore, where do you devote and where do you do devotion and where you worship. Then there is something else that he has talked, he has spoken about supplication. What is supplication? Now confess your sin with each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The honest prayer of a righteous person has great power and produces powerful result. That's talking about, about, about Elijah. And that is James chapter 5 and verse 16. So you find that uh, honest prayer. And honest prayer, this is what we call supplication. And supplication is honest sharing our needs and our problems. I love what the Bible says in the book of James, that we make our petition known unto the Lord. And some of us, we we, we don't, sometimes we, we pray for great things. We don't involve God to our day 
day-to-day -day challenges until those things that we were minimizing, they become giant. But the Bible says everything, you give it to God. And that earnest prayer that Bible talks about in Hebrew chapter 5 and verse 7, in who in the days of his flesh, when he had offered up prayer and supplication with vehement cries and tears to him who was able to save him from the dead, and he was hard because of his God fear. What we're talking about here, we are talking about Jesus, earnest prayer, and we are not talking about uh, about the physical, physical energy. We are speaking about spiritual intensity. When you are praying and your prayer have life in it. Let me say this. There are two words I can say, I come here. If I shout, come here, the same word, but it has different effect. Even our prayer, when we are praying with that spiritual intensity, is cause heaven to hear us. The Bible says that God, Jesus, was offering his prayer with crime. The Bible talks about about about, about a righteous. The Bible says the prayer of a righteous man are very much. It is prayer with life. And then the other things also talks about is that uh, the prayer, you know, thanksgiving. This is what the Bible says, hallelujah. This is what the Bible says in, in, in Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 20. Give thanks always for all things and to God the Father in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Give thanks always for all things. People have never noticed why we give thanks. If you look into the life of Jesus, Jesus when he was confronted by very, 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 very challenging moment, the first most of every prayer he started, he started with thanksgiving. Remember when he went to raise Lazarus, he said, Father, I thank you. That was the first thing. Thank you, open heaven. The other thing that he said that uh, Lazarus come out. But before he said that Lazarus come out, he said, Father, I thank you. When he was multiplying the blood, he looked up and said, Father, I thank you. When you are thanking God, you are not thanking the, you are not thanking the situation you are in. You are thanking God who is able to turn around situation. If thank opened the heaven and burned and and, and, and Lazarus was able to calm down. If you uh, come up, if you uh, the, if the giving of thanks was able to multiply the bread, your situation also thanksgiving. There is something that they do heaven. Sometimes we don't understand everything, but when we when we move on the right condition of our prayer, it it moves God and it bring a lot of result. So Paul said that uh, if you want to live a life free of, of 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 worry, you have to pray and you have to pray right. You have to give offer 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 supplication you have to offer 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 prayer and then you have to offer thanksgiving and i want to let you know because uh, when you look at this i was looking at one person one thing i love about the bible is that whatever bible tells us to do it will give us a, a a practical example of somebody who did the same thing that is encouraging us to do and that is what i want you to know especially when you read in daniel now in daniel 6 verse 10 and verse 11 this is what the bible says now, when Daniel was was when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he went into his house and windows were being opened in his chamber toward Jerusalem. He kneeled down his knee three times a day. Look what he did. He prayed. And he gave thanks before his God as he did before a fourth time. Then these men assembled and found Dave Daniel praying and making supplication before his God. No wonder he had a lot of peace. Because Paul is telling us what you need to do when you need peace is to pray, is to give thanks, and to give thanks and to supplicate. And this is exactly what Daniel was doing. He prayed. He, he offered, he offered, he gave thanks and he offered supplication. Hallelujah. No wonder, no wonder the Bible talks about in Daniel chapter 6 and verse 18 that all night along the king could not sleep. He did not eat anything and he would not let anyone come to him, entertain him. Daniel was in the pre was in the was in the den of lion. He was asleep and peaceful. The king who was in Paris enjoying a good bed, he could not be able to sleep. And I say this in the name of the Lord. If Daniel was able to exercise that. And if that is what Paul is telling us, if you need to have, or you need to overcome worry, one of the things that need you need to do is to pray and to pray the right kind of prayer. And the right kind of prayer is where you pray, giving your giving, giving your giving your needs unto God, where it involves adoration, devotion, and worship. Then you go on to say that you give thanks, and you are giving thanks not because of things, you are giving thanks to God who is able to do all things. 
things and turn things around. Remember, God bring order out of chaos. Remember, God bring resurrection out of crucifixion. Remember, God bring life out of death. God is not intimidated by your situation. If you can give thanks unto him, he is able to turn around situation for you. And the Bible talks about that Daniel did exactly that. Would you be the second person in their situation? You see, my brother, my sister, as you listen to me right now, you cannot go through this with your feeling. You know by now what your feelings are doing. They are like a roller coaster. You are up and you are down. But if you want to find success over worry, do this, that you have to do, and you have to walk according to the right direction and principle. And if you do that, the peace of God that surpasses all human understanding will guard you. Remember prayer is start with the secured mind. And I pray in the name of Jesus, whatever you are going through right now, whatever could be challenging right now, you don't have to submit to it. You don't have to worry. I pray that you enjoy the peace of God. I pray when you go to bed, you will give up your worry to God and surrender to God by applying the first principle. And next week and the week after, we'll be talking about the right kind of thinking because also your mind is very, very strong because what you think the Bible says as the man thinketh, so he is. The doctor tells us we are what we eat. The word of God tells us we are what we think. And so next week on Saturday, because Paul told about three things, about right prayer, and but talk about right thinking, and talk about uh, uh, talk about right living. If you apply these things, you will enjoy the peace of God that surpasses all human understanding, and you find that you will say bye-bye to worry. Thank God. And we praise God that in the name of Jesus, that Paul went through this for us, learned the principles and have passed it over to us. Will you enjoy them by applying it? I pray in Jesus' name, you continue to enjoy that. And the Bible says the peace of God you guard. Remember when Paul was writing all this, he was in prison and he was guarded by, 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 a, by, 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 by a soldier. And he's talking about the peace of God you guard your mind. And when you guided your mind and you are guarded in your heart, you can be assured, my brother, my sister, that you can lead a victorious life. I pray that you will be able to enjoy that peace and you live a free a, a, a life free of worry in Jesus' name. Let me pray for you right now. Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you because of our brothers and I thank you for our sisters. There are some of us who are listening to me right, right now who are weighed down by the situation that they are going through, but they don't have to worry because God, you are a portion in their land of the living and you have truly you laid uh, some condition for us to fulfill if we are going to overcome worry. Thank you for the word of God. I pray that the Holy Spirit of the living God will continue to amplify this word and help them not only to hear but to apply in their life in Jesus' name. I pray that you live a victorious life free of worry and as you continue to do that, the Holy Spirit of the living God helping you, then we can be able to go through this in the name of Jesus. We will never be able to change the outward things but we can change because prayer and, and and prayer, prayer, and the prayer when we pray accordingly, it will do it will deal with our inward problem because, because worry is about inside issue. And we cannot be able to change the outside things, but if we change our inside, we can be able to overcome and have the right attitude. I pray in the name of Jesus. If you are listening to me right now and you have never given your life to Christ, the Bible says that. Uh, the people who do not know Jesus Christ, they will never know peace because the peace is, does not come because of things that we have. The peace come because of the relationship that we have with Jesus. I pray right now that you continue to enjoy so. I pray in Jesus' name as I pray for you right now. Father, in Jesus' name, if you have never known Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, I would like to commit him to you because you enjoy the peace and even the thing that is happening around you, you can have a place where you can be able to take them because Jesus has promise he will always be together with us. Let me pray for you. And if you have never been given your life to Christ, please follow and please, you know, just, just follow, come after me and as we pray this prayer together with you. Father, in Jesus' name, I give you my life right now. 
I know that you died for me and I know that I will never have peace until my, my relationship with you is restored. And right now in Jesus' name, write, write my name in the Lamb Book of Life. Can give me your Holy Spirit to live for you from today henceforth. And I pray in Jesus' name that you keep me and Lord, you protect me in your name, in Jesus' name. I thank God because if you have prayed for that, that prayer, if you are not within our vicinity, I pray that you may look for a place where you can be able to join a grieving in church and God you continue to bless you. We love you, we care for you and we are concerned about you. We continue to pray for you. Believe you me in the name of the Lord. Next week on Wednesday we'll be carrying on about the other two, the other thing that you'll be talking about, the right mind. Otherwise God bless you, we love you and have a great day. God bless you.